Hey, yesterday we did a video about pulling through your custom global colors when you are writing some CSS. Maybe it's for a CSS framework or you want to be a bit prescriptive over what colors are applied to your text or your H1 or your H2 or some other classes. Now, some of you did notice I was using exclamation important. It was commented to me and someone sent me a DM as well. I want to explain the reason why I had that. It was because of my elemental settings, but I want to also address the fact that, well, what would have happened if you had ticked or unticked the disabling of the elemental default global colors and fonts. Let me explain what I mean. Sometimes when I'm building tutorials or even working on websites, because I may only be using the global styles and fonts, you know, the ones you normally do where you add your colors and your fonts, and I'm going to just add in like a font clamp calculator, and I'm not planning to use too much custom CSS. I will go and untick these boxes because I'm not overly bothered whether the default colors and fonts are disabled because I'm going to control everything I'm kind of doing and I'm okay with that and it's never affected any websites that I've built on. However, if you were going to start using some custom CSS because you're being prescriptive with like a framework or some of the CSS codes we shared a couple of weeks ago in our free packs that you can go and get, link is in the video description. I would say that you go and tick both of these. By ticking them, you disable the elemental default colors and fonts. And it now means that if you apply any CSS, they take precedent and they are important without you having to put exclamation important because too many exclamation importants can create a bit of conflict or problem later on with regards to the hierarchy. Let me show you what you would see if you've got like some global colors and custom colors, if you had your, well, those two boxes ticked. So when they are ticked, you are disabling the elemental default colors and fonts. We're only looking at colors here, but I've done it for the fonts as well. And if anyone doesn't understand, because I mentioned that I did a video yesterday, the link for that is in the video description. I'm going to retouch a lot of what I did there. So you don't have to jump to that video. You can just watch this one. But if it intrigues you, go ahead. Let's go and look at an example page. I've got three headings. They've all got their HTML tags, H1, H2, H3. And you can see my system colors and you can see my custom colors as well. Now, all of my headings are black, but none of my colors here are black. And if I was to go into each heading, I have not set the style for them either. Because I've disabled the elemental default colors and fonts, it just goes to a black color. But if I was to now untick this and save changes and go back to the same page, now they've all gone to blue. And have you noticed the sizing has also changed? Because now, by me unticking, I'm not disabling the elemental colors and fonts. And because I'm using the Hello theme, it brings through some of the theme styling. So what it now says is every heading defaults to the primary color, which is blue. And it's going to apply this sizing for H1, H2, and eventually H6, the body and the text, you know, the paragraph as well. Now, if you're going to go to the style for each of these widgets or however you do it, and you go and pop in your size, whether it's pixel, REM, or a clamp calculated formula, or you go and set your color. And when you set your color, you can pick, you know, any of the colors here. That's okay. You can get away with that. But if you're going to use some custom CSS, this will not work for you unless you pop in an exclamation important. So staying on this one, because we're here now and we have unticked the boxes, I'm going to go to custom CSS and it's just over here in case anyone's wondering. And I've pasted this in. So I'm saying the H1 must now use the secondary global color, primary, secondary text and accent. And then we had a load of custom colors. Don't worry, I'm going to get onto that. And that links into the video I did yesterday and why I had to use the exclamation important because of what I had done. But just stay with me on this. H2 is using the accent color. Well, I've added them in, but nothing has happened because the boxes are unticked. Therefore, I'm not disabling the default elemental colors and fonts. So they're taking a precedent. So to get this to show, I've now got to go over here before the semicolon and I've got to add an exclamation important. And you can basically see what it's doing. H3 has not changed because I've not added in any code for that. Are you with me so far? So I'm using some CSS to be very prescriptive because I'm going to create a bit of a framework and I want this to apply every time I add in a H2 unless I go and give it a special class name or an ID and then you could refine this further. But to get it to work, 
I had to add in exclamation important. But what if the boxes were ticked? Well, okay, let's go and tick the boxes, okay? And I hope you stay with me But when I am ticking and unticking, okay? So before was unticked, now I've ticked it. Let's go back to that page. And the colors are still applying. H3 has gone to black because remember, we've now disabled the elemental colors and fonts, the default ones, because we've now ticked the boxes. So the pink and the orange are coming in. And you're going to go, well, that's not that different from what you did before, except the H3 has gone from blue to black. Well, before, when I untick the boxes, I had to stick in exclamation important. I can get rid of this and the colors stay present. So because the boxes are ticked, I don't need to do that. So if you are going to do like prescriptive CSS coding like this, I recommend that you tick both boxes. But let's now take this a step further because remember we had some custom colors and I've dropped in an image of the colors just so that we remember them because we had green, dark green, we had light hyphen green and neon underscore green. So I'm going to go over here to my H2. In fact, we'll now we'll leave them and we'll make a copy and we'll go to H3. Remember at the moment our boxes are ticked. The clue is the fact that the H3 heading is in black, meaning it disables the default colors and fonts. So we're going to change this to say H3 and I'm going to type in green. It doesn't change. Let's go and type in dark green with a space. Still no difference. Okay, how about dark hyphen green? Nope. Uh, what about dark underscore green? Nothing is changing. Well, let's go and use one which is definitely written the way it is. So light underscore green. I probably didn't say that very well. Sorry, I meant light hyphen green like that. The color or H3 is not changing and it's not like we've got H3 twice there. So I'll tell you what, let's update and refresh the page. It's just not working. So now I'm going to add in important. And again, H3 heading is not changing because it doesn't matter whether you have ticked the boxes or not. Elemental applies like a random variable. And if you were to go and add this color manually to the style and you inspect, you're going to get these random six, seven digits. And they make absolutely no sense. I mentioned it in the previous video. So what you need to do is use a custom code snippet. I'm going to paste in this code, hit save changes and activate. If you want to get this code, there's a link in the video description for you to go and get it from our snippets bundle. Let's go back to the settings just to remind you that these are both ticked at the moment. I've removed the exclamation important because we don't need it here because the boxes are ticked. I've got light hyphen green, but it still is not changing. What that code snippet does, it doesn't matter if you've got dark space, light hyphen or neon underscore, it changes everything to be an underscore. That's really important. So I'm gonna change this to say light underscore green and it goes to that color. If I was to change it to be dark underscore green, it would then change. And if I was to change this to be neon underscore green. So if you've got a space or a hyphen or an underscore, everything becomes an underscore because I found there was a bit of a problem with that. That is working fine. I, I wish it worked without me having to do that code snippet, but I found that it, it, I couldn't get it to always be consistent. There was one occasion where I got it to work with that and I could not work out for the life of me. How did I do that? So when you've got the boxes ticked, you can just stick this in now and you can refer to your custom color. But if these boxes are unticked, okay, you can see the pattern here. When they're unticked, this is not going to work for you until you do exclamation important. And you can now see the colors change. And obviously the other two haven't because I've been removing them. If I drop those back in, you can see what it's doing. And this is the same for if you were doing like a prescriptive font framework as well. The H1, your H2s and all of that. And maybe some other classes. So if you are going to use exclamation, sorry, said that wrong. If you're going to untick, you're going to need to start sticking that in. Otherwise, they don't fire up because the precedence and the order of what's important and not in the hierarchy, kind of um, the elemental will take precedence over it. But if you disable them by ticking the boxes, you can then do this without having to stick in exclamation important. Hope that makes sense. I'm Imran Web Squadron. See you soon. Never break. Always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win your life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings.